Robert Kiyosaki is a renowned author of Rich Dad Poor Dad, urges investors to seize the Bitcoin opportunity amidst global market uncertainties. While traditional assets falter, Kiyosaki advocates for embracing real assets like gold, silver, and Bitcoin. Stay tuned for more investment wisdom. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and let's start. Historically, when Bitcoin breaks its previous cycle high, a monster altcoins run is about to start. Right now, Bitcoin is consolidating just below all-time highs. Is this time different? Let's see how it plays out, but alt season probably is about to start, and we are waiting for it. As far as it happens, it will be pretty cool. I'm kind of seeing Bitcoin heading into a classical reaccumulation triangle over this next period. We scooped up the bottom of the deep as we discussed discussed ahead of the fact, but also we anticipated a chop to follow. Could see it playing out like this more or less. What do you guys think on this chart? Update on altcoins, the monthly super trend has turned green, Bitcoin's dominance is facing resistance, signaling it's time for significant money flow into small, mid and large cap altcoins. We're waiting for it as well as not many altcoins still pumped up and we're still looking at some uh, AI altcoins pumping up while everything else is kinda low on the price. Reminder, the volatility we're seeing in Bitcoin is just the beginning. If anything, this is the calm before the storm. Bayers are trying to push Bitcoin lower, slamming prices into the monthly support at $65,300 again. Expecting a mostly choppy environment over the weekend, after which bully, uh, I mean, after which bulls try to reclaim of 69,000 once more. Holding monthly support is a key. Bitcoin top signal 1 million Bollinger's band. When the 1 million Bollinger band stop expanding and curl up, we have our top. Even more effective was a candle close back inside the upper band. Uh, all eyes on the weekly close. If Bitcoin successfully flips this zone for support, there is a fully little standing in the way of price making its way towards the target of this falling wedge, which is $100,000. TikTok, we are heading there. BlackRock now owns over 1% of the Bitcoin's total supply, and it's really crazy. Just 1% and they done it in just 2 or 3 months. That's basically huge. I mean, even 2 months, even less than 2 months they've done it. So basically, 1% is a lot, but they are already over to 1% and heading to 2%. During Bitcoin correction, it's common to shift to focus on the lower time frame charts, but be careful not to lose sight of the bigger picture. The weekly chart looks primed to take off. Don't get shaken out by LTF noise. Uh, the next one is uh, as it took gold the ETFs five years to cross the 50 billion AUM, Bitcoin did it in just 57 days. Just how is that? Uh, we already know how it happened. Concerns that Bitcoin from long-term holders will be deposited into exchanges. Situation this week shows that the BlackRock's net inflows of Bitcoin are consistently hitting record lows. If this is just temporary, then there may not be an any issue. However, if it persists, there's a possibility that the long-term holders may start depositing Bitcoin into exchanges in the same way as before and selling their holdings. ETF investors showing their noob. On the first deep, ETFs did $1.6 billion of the outflows while the Bitcoin network received 1.1 billion of total net flows. This means plenty of self custody investors bought the deep. Uh, good morning fam, the war of Bitcoin spot ETFs was predicted to end with 3 to 4 funds remaining alive. What are these 4, four funds by your prediction? And here we could see basically on this small gif of what uh, are those right there. So this is BlackRock, Cybeat, Fidelity's ARK and uh, uh, Bitwise I guess or uh, it's something else. I, I, I don't remember, it's probably uh, B, B2B. So that's what we see right there. Don't miss the bull run in the rest of 2024. Bitcoin has had its well-structured pattern in history. Bull run is basically coming. 
They stinked opinion on Bitcoin with Kiyosaki and Peter Schiff. In recent discussions about the investment strategies, two well-known figures have offered contrasting perspectives on Bitcoin and how investors should approach it. Robert Kiyosaki, famous for his bestseller Rich Dad Poor Dad book, and Peter Schiff, a well-known advocate for gold, offer contrasting opinions highlighting the opportunities and challenges facing cryptocurrency investors. Kiyosaki and Bitcoin vs. Schiff on Bitcoin ETFs Robert Kiyosaki, the author who brought us Rich Dad Poor Dad, is telling us to jump on the Bitcoin train while we can. He's basically saying, if you got the cash, grab as much Bitcoin as you can. Why? Well, he is looking at what's happening in China and around the world and seeing that now might not be the best time to put your money in traditional stuff like stocks and bonds. Instead, he is all about the real assets like gold, silver and especially Bitcoin. Simply according to Kiyosaki, this is not the time to invest in traditional assets like stocks and bonds, but rather to focus on tangible assets such as gold, silver and increasingly favored Bitcoin. On the other hand, Peter Schiff, an important gold advocate and economist, has raised the concerns about the limitations of owning Bitcoin through the exchange traded funds, as Schiff highlighted the issue of liquidity limitations during the non-trading hours, emphasizing the frustration of being unable to trade during the market crashes or significant price movements. And he says that war and chief warnings also extended the vulnerability of Bitcoin ETFs to risky trading behavior, which could worsen market volatility. So the importance of self-custody. But here where it gets interesting. People who love Bitcoin are saying, hey, why not just hold on to your own Bitcoin instead of through the e an ETF? It's like keeping your cash in your own pocket instead of depending on a bank. You have more control, especially when things get wild in the market. Chief criticism of Bitcoin ETFs has sparked discussions about the importance of self-custody in the cryptocurrency space, as many Bitcoin supporters argue that owning Bitcoin directly without depending on third-party custodians like ETFs provides greater control and security. James Safart, an ETF analyst, acknowledges that liquidity challenges are not unique to Bitcoin ETFs but apply across the various asset classes. This highlights a broader issue in the ETF market rather than a specific flaw with Bitcoin. Simon Dixon, C of Bank to the Future, emphasizes the convenience and control of self-custody, especially compared to traditional assets like physical gold, as he suggests that owning the Bitcoin directly is simpler and more accessible for investors. Bryce Clark, an entrepreneur, Echoes Dixon's sentiment, advising investors to take charge of their Bitcoin assets and avoid trusting intermediaries like ETFs. Dave Weisberger, a digital asset advocate, sees the shift towards a digital assets as an unavoidable highlighting the benefits of 24-7 trading, quick settlements, and decentralized control. Key takeaways for investors. So the advice from Kiyosaki and Chief, along with the focus on self-custody by Bitcoin supporters, provides important lessons for investors. Bitcoin is a digital gold. Risks of Bitcoin ETFs shift you stress the importance of understanding the risk associated with ETFs, particularly as well volatile market, uh, the self-custody and control. The call for self-custody resonates with investors looking to have direct control over their cryptocurrencies holdings, emphasizing security and independence, and navigating uh, the digital uh, economy as the financial landscape evolves towards the digital assets. Investors are encouraged to stay informed, exercise caution, and explore options that align with their risk tolerance and investment goals. So overall, what you need to know. Ultimately, what we can gather from these discussions is that it's crucial to make smart choices and start on top of your cryptocurrency investment in today's digital world. Both Kiyosaki and Shiv may have different views, but they highlight the importance of being well informed and taking an active approach to managing your investments. Looking at the bigger picture, these conversations show how investment strategies are constantly changing and becoming more diverse. Kiyosaki encourages us to grab opportunities in Bitcoin and other tangible assets, while Keith is reminds us that having control and self-custody over our investment is a key in a digital asset world. That's all the information we got on today's video, so don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. See you in the next one, and peace.